My fertilizer of choice lately is granular or a liquid fertilizer. And no, I do not shy away from synthetics, but that's a story for a different time. Now we all know that fertilizers contain N, P, and K. Sometimes they contain an S for sulfur, micronutrients, calcium, magnesium, etc., and so forth. But what if you go outside of that? What if you gave your plant vitamins? And more specifically, what if you gave your plant expired multivitamins? that are meant for humans. So today's video, I am going to go through whether or not you can use your expired multivitamins to bump up the potential of your fertilizer. Yeah, no. Soil science school, universities, we don't talk about adding vitamins to our plants, so I actually had to dig into a lot of bizarre research. Turns out that your average multivitamin contains vitamins A, B, D, E. I feel like I'm saying the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, that's it. And the world of vitamin Bs, it's B1, B2, B3, B6, B12, and folic acid. And then it kind of goes into a whole bunch of micronutrients such as calcium, iron, magnesium, manganese, zinc, potassium, copper, selenium, and iodine. We already know that calcium, iron, magnesium, manganese, copper, these are all essential micronutrients that plants need to thrive and survive. And oddly enough, selenium and iodine can also be taken up by plants when it's in the soil and it's been shown to have some benefits. But what about specifically the vitamins? We all know that our produce has vitamins. After all, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. But how many vitamins can you get from plants? Well, turns out it's all of them, except for B12 and D3. Seriously though, your produce is like your living version of a multivitamin. Why do we not just eat more of this? I don't know, the price, the price of it's the reason why. You may be thinking, problem solved. Dump the vitamins on the plants, clearly they uptake micronutrients and the presence of vitamins A, B, C, D somehow means that they're being absorbed. Well, it turns out plants actually synthesize their own vitamins from the nutrients in the soil. Rather than relying on external sources, they own the patent on making the most bioavailable vitamins known to humans via themselves. But what if I told you plants can actually uptake vitamins? Yes, I mean vitamins, not micronutrients. Now, of course, this is under very specific circumstances and furthermore, only very specific vitamins. So let's take a look at what those vitamins are and what the circumstances need to be and whether or not you should even debate doing this. So let's start off at the beginning with B1, AKA thiamine. So studies have shown this one to improve growth, root development, and just overall a better plant. The mechanisms for this are still highly debated, but here's what some research says. In the Journal of Horticultural Science, a study was published in 2021, and it was called The Effects of Pyroxidine, Thiamine, and Folic Acid on Growth Reproductive and Biochemical Characteristics of the Delphus Tomato. The study was conducted as a randomized complete block design with three replications in a greenhouse setting during the years of 2019 and 2020. The result showed that pyroxidine, thiamine, and folic acid vitamins alone or in combination with each other improved the growth, reproductive organs, and the biochemical characteristics of this tomato. Now, while this study is on a very specific species of tomato in a very specific set of conditions, aka a greenhouse, as always, studies are not a scalpel, they are a hammer. And it's interesting that B1 can show some results, but I think it goes without saying for this to be cut and dry fact, a lot more studies have to be done. But, and as your own garden scientist, something maybe you wanna try out, up to you. Now, what would happen if we combine vitamin B1 with vitamin C? AKA absorbic acid. And no, those aren't actual vitamins. One was like cold FX. You think I'm that sophisticated? In 2009, there was a study done and it was called exogenous absorbic acid or thiamine increases the resistance of sunflower and maize to salt stress. So in soil science, we know that sodium chloride does some pretty heavy damage when it comes to soil. But it turns out when it comes to plants, it's equally as damaging. It can affect the photosynthesis 
photosynthetic rate, pigments and biosynthesis of the chlorophyll that helps with photosynthesis, and the overall integrity of the cell membrane throughout the plant. When they took ASA, absorbic acid, and combined it with B1 in a slurry and then soaked the seeds, it actually caused the seed to almost change its outer chemistry. How they worded it was that it was the accumulation of certain ions that antagonized or ameliorated the inhibitory effects of salt stress. So this one obviously wasn't applied to the soil, it was soaked in the seed, which I mean, technically is what you could do with your vitamins, multivitamins. So in that case, the seeds were soaked in a solution rather than it being applied to the soil, but it did have some benefits when it came to salt stress and helping that plant become more resistant resistant, again, in two very specific crops under very specific conditions. Like I said, these studies are a hammer, not a scalpel. It's interesting food for thought. But what if I told you the addition of this one vitamin could actually change the trajectory for human health? Back in the day, I used to be a vegan. And one thing that vegans and vegetarians are always concerned with is vitamin B12. And it's because plants don't have it. But turns out when B12 is present in the soil, plants can actually uptake it, deposit it in its biomass, and then when it goes to be consumed by humans, it has B12. A study published in Plant and Soil done in 1994 called Enrichment of Some B Vitamins in Plants with Application of Organic Fertilizers discovered that the application of cow manure specifically, which apparently is naturally high in B12, actually increased the B12 content in barley by three times in spinach by twofold. So while we're talking about multivitamins benefiting us in uptake of vitamins, Technically, manures and other organic forms of fertilizer could also house these vitamins and minerals, which ultimately can help your plant or change the chemistry of your plant in some ways. Now there's B2, B3, and B5, all of which who have had trials and some kinda sorta studies done on them. And all of them show that there is some potential for protecting plants against oxidative stress when these are applied either to the soil or again, in a water type solution. So let's go back to the fertilizer with a side of multivitamin added. There are four big considerations or limitations that you should consider before just going all in with trying this out in your own trials and garden science experiments. Number one, they could contain a filler and they most definitely contain micronutrients. And my experience with micronutrients in soil is that it is very, very easily and very, very very quickly over applied and this can mean that you may be doing a lot of detriment to your soil rather than helping number two is that these companies didn't use multivitamins they use the very pure forms of b1 and b12 so the actual the concentration the product being used obviously is going to vary because as many of you know the quality of a vitamin varies drastically, which is why you can get multivitamins for $15 and you can get multivitamins for hundreds of dollars. Your species of your plants, the environmental factors that are exposed to all will change the uptake and whether or not you see any benefit at all. And the last one is hands down that if your soil is healthy and contains all the nutrients it needs, plants are able to synthesize everything vitamin wise that humans need and plants naturally design without us interfering by putting multivitamins in our fertilizers. B12 being the exception, of course. And if you wanna learn more about grocery store produce and the produce in your garden potentially being lower in nutrients, you wanna check out this video right here. And that video is what Google says you should watch.